Yeah, okay, here we are from the AGO, from Toronto, and it is um, wonderful to have you all here with us for the Senior Social, and I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Doris, and I'm also here with Bogdan, and uh, Bogdan, wave. <laughs> hi, hi everybody, Bogdan here. Nice to be here with you. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, so we are going to begin by sharing the slide, I'm assuming from the facade of the AGO. There we go. Oh, I love this picture. It's like I can't look at it enough. And I know there's going to be some changes off there to the what, what we see as the left, but the you know east corner changes are happening. But in the meantime, I just want you to know, especially for those of you that are from far away, uh, you know, the Art Gallery of Ontario is on, uh, you know, the, this facade that we're looking at is on Dundas Street. And uh, speaking of food, uh, if you walk west um, from the front entrance, uh, you're going to enter an area where there's lots of lots of authentic uh, Chinese food options. And if you walk east, uh, you cross the area where we have a lot of hospitals. Uh, and you head towards the Eaton Center, and it is again a food, foodie, foodie district area where you can get so many different types of food. So uh, the the Art Gallery of Ontario is definitely in a in a wonderful location. And uh, today, I have to just say, like the big focus is on the exhibition I am here, and it is actually uh, at the back of the building. So when you see this you know, facade, it looks like, you know, it's pretty small, but believe me, when you get to the, the, uh, the back of the building, it is five stories high. And uh, the I am here exhibit is in that what we call the contemporary tower. And uh, it is an exhibition that is, um, uh, yeah, it's just exciting. It's our focus today. The two artists that we're going to be talking about are in that, um, exhibition. Uh, but before I continue, uh, I should just move on to uh, the next slide, which is our land acknowledgement. Yes, this is really important to us. Um, the land the AGO is on is Michisagig Nishnabe Territory, Mississauga. It is also governed by a treaty between the Mississauga of the Credit and the Canadian government. Toronto is Michisagig Nishnabe Territory. It has also been occupied by other Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat Confederacies. Thank you. Thanks, Fraser. And by the way, behind the scenes here, just a shout out, Fraser, Natalie, thank you. <laughs> All right, next slide, please. Woohoo! This is me. I'm a bit of a, I'm an artist, actually. I, I'm a visual artist. I do a little bit of performance. I do tours in the gallery. Um, and I, I'm just excited to say that I have been in the exhibit, I am here, and there on the left is me beside the Mary Pratt uh, piece. Um, so these are cod fillets, fillets on cardboard. And you can see here, the reason I want to show this is because it gives you an idea of the size of the pieces that we're going to be looking at today. Okay, so you can see here that when she painted these cod fillets, uh, that cod fillet is literally like the size of my face. And uh, on the left, uh, on the, sorry, the right uh, is Annie Patukuk's, um licking the plate clean. And you can see there that I've held up my hand to show you that uh, the plate is indeed the size of the palm of my hand and the palm of your hand, right? So the, the exhibition, the curators um, are Jim Shedden and Alexa Griest, and uh, they did a fantastic job. There was lots and lots of other people involved in this exhibition. So um, I just wanna say that um, actually I'm holding the catalog. Um, you know, it's, it's I am here and it's a wonderful catalog and I am going to uh, reference it um, just before moving on. I want to actually um, speak to uh, Stefan Yost's words at the beginning of the uh, catalog here, uh, the foreword, and these, this is a quote. 
Time and again, we come back to the human desire to leave behind a trace of ourselves or of what we value most, whether in a handprint left on a wall of a cave or in a digital photograph posted to social media. It is a pivotal record of presence at a particular moment. These generation spanning gestures can be familiar and comforting. They hold the potential to connect and fortify us in times of uncertainty and upheaval. We hope you'll be warmed and inspired by the cherished communal experiences carefully woven throughout the exhibition. All right, so these are our two pieces that have been carefully woven together for you today. And I just wanna say uh, it's pretty profound that um, since this exhibition is very much about um, documenting our daily lives, it's uh, we are doing both today. Together, we're going to actually be documenting what's personal in our lives. And we're also documenting this episode, right? Like it'll be um, part of the AGO archive. So very kind of a, a double thing. All right, so uh, we should probably move on to the next slide. All right, so the, the first um, artwork we're looking at, Mary Pratt, cod fillets in cardboard cartons, okay? So you've already seen sort of the size of it. So you have an understanding because I, when I look at something like 49.5, 73 centimeters, it's like, okay, <laughs> what does that mean? But uh, so I hope you like that. Um, definitely, yeah, estate. In 1975, I just want to mention that in 1975, Mary Pratt was 40 years old. Okay, so she painted this when she was 40. I'm sure um, we're, we are the senior social after all, so probably many of us are, you know, older than 40. Uh, but uh, yeah, she painted this at age 40. Um, and um, you know what, if you don't mind, uh, may I ask to have it quickly go to back to the first image of me in there? Sorry, Fraser. Yeah, thanks. Okay, because before I actually begin, I just want you to know that all these like, there's interesting connections to both of these artists. Like Annie Patukuk, um, I mean, she was age uh, 36 when she paint, uh, drew. So yeah, what we're looking at um, on the left is actually a painting, okay? And on the right is a drawing. So Annie Patukuk, a drawer on the left, a painter. Um, not that you know, not that uh, Mary Pratt didn't draw, but at this at this point in time, she was preferring to to paint. All right, but I just want to kind of quickly say, again, you know, this is about I am here, the exhibition. This is about we are here, and it's about food. So the title of this part of the exhibition is called Food Glorious Food. And I know that we're gonna get like, we're getting warmed up because when we do our art activity and Bogdan is gonna guide us, but it definitely is gonna be about, you know, food in our life and uh, the stuff of life, really the stuff of life, uh, household scenes, uh, frank, very frank descriptions. Um, I also want you to know that in the chat, there is going to be some links to, if you wanna dig a little deeper, do a deeper dive into both of these artists' lives, I'd like to share in the chat, um, thanks to Natalie, um, you know, if you wanna do further reading, because honestly, today, I want us to really focus on, you know, our lives. Why, like, I don't know about you, but I've been posting foods on Instagram. Like, I, sorry, food in my life, like my dinners and stuff, sorry, posting food. Yeah, posting my art and posting my food. Um, and it's a kind of a strange, odd thing to do, um, maybe. Or maybe it's really important, you know, because these things mean so much to us. So uh, there are other connections between these two artists. And I just want to make sure, uh, because on the website, it said that they are from different eras. They're not actually from different eras. Um, 
they're they're actually very similar too in in geographic terms uh, both are would have a great connection for example to the labrador sea and uh for uh for mary pratt it would be uh the the sea that is um had the cod and and i have to say this this painting could be the last painting of cod that was caught on uh, in the Labrador Sea, like they, it has been overfished, frankly. And uh, for Annie Patukuk, uh, the Labrador Sea it got um, a lot of ridicule, uh, or it should have in some sense. Uh, you know, she is an uh, Inuk artist, and uh, seal, of course, is very important for the Inuit. Uh, but, um, you know, in 2004, seal, as it is country food, it's also, it was also had very bad press in terms of how many seals were killed because of their, for their fur, not for the whole body, not for the fur and the, and the, you know, sustenance. Um, so anyway, that's a, that's another thing to deep dive into, but you can read more about that. Okay, so we should probably go back to the Mary Pratt because I need to do a description. So uh, I, I would describe, and I, and I know a little bit about her process, but light, light is falling onto, these are, and these are, this is raw. So this is, you know, ready to be cooked. But Mary Pratt, she has, I'm actually gonna quote her. She describes the impulse seeing the groceries come in for instance or cooking i'm getting supper and suddenly i look at the roast in the oven or the cod fillet spread out on the foil and i get this gut reaction i think that's gorgeous that's absolutely wonderful and i must save it and save it she did so mary pratt works from uh, photography and so this is what she is, um, uh, you know, documented, uh, you know, with, with film, let's say. And in her time, it was like, you know, slide film. And uh, yeah, she was focused on uh, the light falling. And of course, she uh, accentuates the original photograph. So the, the original photograph would not entice you as much as this painting does. All right. Um, so I want to open it up because I definitely want to get some some uh, responses. I I don't know if anybody out there is in the chat who wants to like give give your first like would you would you actually paint or photograph like raw raw meat? <laughs> Let's see. No, I I could um, I have some thoughts maybe if nobody else sure. is clamoring nobody's clamoring yet uh you know i i love this picture and you know as you as i was listening to you doris i was thinking about um that there is something um uh, that is very urgent about food and especially raw food like this you know that you know you bring it home fish you gotta you know get it in the fridge you gotta cook it because it's gonna start to smell soon and this, you know, I, I love this painting and a lot of Mary Pratt's paintings of food are so compelling. It's like she, she took that that moment and uh, kind of monumentalized it. It's like, this is like a, a, a monument that, that was painted painstakingly. It took a long time to paint. It takes, it takes a long time to paint in this manner. Uh, and to capture this light, it's almost, yes, there's light falling on the fish, but it's, she painted it as if the light emanates from it. And, and yes. I think that, that that's a way to express that, that feeling, you know, like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm salivating right now. Yeah. I look at this fish, <laughs> Even I'm, over I'm, getting, I'm, I'm getting hungry. And, you know, this, as you said, it's very, it's very difficult to, to capture an image of yeah. food and, and retain or transmit its um, deliciousness. Bogdan, our visitors are feeling, are, are you know, the, the folks that have joined us today, I have a comment like, I like the textures, absolutely, so many textures in there. Um, uh, I should say names, sorry, that was from Bima, 
uh, Ellen, Ryan, to everyone. I love the shadows on the kitchen counter, especially the colors. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for sharing this. Love this picture. It reminds me of other famous painting, Codfish, yes, on the foil. There is harmony of color in this painting. Yeah. All right. I think we can agree that regardless of the fact that it's raw, <laughs> oh, good. it's somebody, delicious, right? Somebody finds it unappetizing. That's great. Yeah. I, I love when oh, you know, somebody. Oh, right. here we go. Yeah, yeah. I have the opposite. Unappetizing. There we go. Pat Power. Yep. And uh, Margaret Gears. Yep. She captured cod like a treasured object, which is now due to over. Yeah. She has anticipated how. Yes. Yes. You know, like I shouldn't I should just say thank you to everyone. But when I get excited only because like when I do a little bit of research and I discover that, you know, like this literally could be like cod that maybe did come to, you know, where she lived um, right from the, you know, the ocean. And yet it could be literally like the last cod from that area. It's so sad, but now we've, it's been captured. Yeah, very interesting. Um, all right. Yes, yeah, you know, you know I, I love that art uh, can elicit, you know, very different opinions. And now that I read that comment, it makes me look at it again. And yes, you know, you, you can, I can now look at it and see that, you know, it's kind of just like a mushy, like, it could be like a gross, almost like, uh, you know, gross looking meat or it's a dead animal, you know. Especially. Oh, I got a response. There's still plenty of cod in the ocean. Uh, appreciate the texture from, mm -hmm. it's a cultural heritage in Newfoundland. There you go. Wonderful, plenty of, yeah. Okay, I hope I haven't missed anything here. I'm new to navigating this sort of lengthy chat. Um, all right, I probably, we should probably go to the next uh, slide. Fraser, thank you. Uh, Annie Patukuk. So I think this is actually gonna really help us too to warm up because uh, I don't know how many of you are gonna pull out your oil paints and your um, you know, board or canvas, but uh, I know that I have my pencils, pencil crayons ready and Annie Patukuk is, you know, she is known for, for this kind of, of drawing that was bold and quite different um, in the time, 2004, 2005, uh, King Knight Studios, where she's from. But I, I should do a quick description. Um, so it is a, a kitchen setting and there is, I'm, I don't know who's on the floor, but I know that Annie Patukuk drew from memory from her childhood a lot. Uh, so it could be, you know, somebody that she just remembered in her life, or it could be that, um, you know, she is, uh, uh, it's her, it could be her. Um, there are some things in this picture that really stood out for me. I love the fridge magnet uh, that is the co-op. I love that there's a little bit of, it looks like fruit, maybe some, a grape magnet. Um, <laughs> I still lick my plate or bowl. Thank you. Culture. Yeah, this is good. We're going to, and we also have a chance, by the way, that when we do the art making, we'll still have a, a lot of time to like chat with each other and talk about things. So it is uh, what we're seeing is like kitchen uh, counter, things like sugar cubes and uh, a, a cookie jar, um, dishwashing soap, a cup with a heart on it, a bowl. Um, you know, kettle and pot. Um, so it's pretty. And I mean, I mean, Annie Patukuk is known even for the, you know, the special edition of the, you know, detail of a light switch. Um, on the, the floor, there is a toy um, that, uh, you know, Inuit children might have in their household. Um, it's a little sled with, you know, a bundle of, of good stuff inside, you know, being transported or uh, it could be, um, yeah, seal, who knows? So uh, yeah, that is more, a little bit more, maybe from people observing things in their own life. Is there something in, on this, in this image that you could relate to? I like the idea that I still lick my plate or bowl something even now, not something I do. Oh, can I, I'll just share something. Um, 
I, I actually do uh, lick my finger and I pick up my little chocolate sprinkles um, when I've had chocolate sprinkles. My, my background is Dutch and chocolate sprinkles are a thing. So I totally like understand, you know, that idea of like, you want to get every last morsel off the plate, which is so fun. All yeah, right. this, this picture makes me laugh because, uh, you know, as I was preparing for today, I, uh, maybe for a couple of weeks now, I've been trying to, I had this idea of, you know, when I, when I go, next time I go to a restaurant, I'll, I'll have my sketchbook with me. And before I eat my meal, I'm going to draw it. Wow, but, good for you. <laughs> well, it didn't work out because, uh, you know, when, when, I, when, I, when I sit down to eat, I'm hungry. Okay, and then I for, forget drawing. I'm just, I'm going to eat it and then it's gone. So, so, then, uh, so I actually had to take a picture to, you know, I did some drinks from pictures. I love this. Bogdan, I just got a response that, that touches my heart a little bit. Uh, first of all, fridge magnets. Yes, um, I have all, but Hachelslach. Yes, chocolate sprinkles are the best for sure. Everybody has to lick those up off the plate. So um, today I wanna actually document uh, or draw that experience. This is so cool. So I feel like there's so many things to know about um, Annie Patukuk and something that it's really hard to see. So I was trying to describe this, this artwork. Down in the bottom right corner is, is actually, cause I saw it in person, you can see the embossment uh, the, um, the embossed um, logo of the King Knight Studio. So um, at this time, she, she actually likes working with small pieces of paper. So if we are all today working on small pieces of paper, that's totally like Annie would totally support this. Um, uh, she, she passed away. I didn't actually speak to sort of the, the tragedy or, or the deaths of both um, Mary Pratt and Annie Patuka, but uh, Annie Patukuk died at age 47 in Ottawa, 2016. Uh, she was, um, uh, as I mentioned, she's a NUC artist uh, from Northern Canada, uh, Cape Dorset, um, Nunavut. And uh, Mary Pratt actually died age 83 in 2018. So uh, one, you know, Annie Patukuk, a, a, a short, a, a too short a life, really. Um, she preferred to work on, as I mentioned, like a smaller piece of paper, but this is a, a, a larger pieces, piece of paper. Uh, she used a felt tip pen, pencil, uh, colored pencils, and she drew, oh, sorry, she drew from memory a lot. She was um, uh, a daughter, daughter of um, uh, Napachi. She has famous relatives, I just wanna mention. Pitsoliak Ashuna, and uh, her cousin is Shuvanai Ashuna. So, you know, she, I think there was probably a little bit of um, a shakeup at this King Knight studio because in the past, there was a lot of sort of process where you would turn your, quickly you would turn your drawing into a print format. But uh, Annie Patukuk and even her cousin, her mother, they were kind of shaking things up a bit. And they decided, you know, I, I'm just going to start to to draw as seeing like maybe the drawing is the the final product. Um, and, you know, ultimately there have been prints made, but uh, in Annie Patukuk's case, I believe that, you know, the um, the drawing is is it's uh, it's sort of valuable because there's very that it's the original there, there, you know, with a lot of prints that were came out of the King Knight studio, there'd be an addition of say 20. Um, Annie Patukuk's, uh, there's, a, you know, maybe no additions. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to quickly mention um, was, oh yeah, apparently I found out that this is like a plastic plate. So that might be something to think about. Um, and uh, yeah, again, why is Annie Patukuk so important? Um, she broke ground. She made a shift in, in the art making that was coming from um, the King Knight Studio. And she got the Sobe Art Award in 2006. All right. So I, I think, um, Bogdan, it is 
almost 2.30. I'm wondering, I'm just going to make sure there aren't any more questions before we move on to the art making. Oh, Doris, what do you sprinkle chocolate on? <laughs> I love it. Sorry, I'm such a, yeah, I'm such a ham, aren't I? Um, uh, I sprinkle it on uh, literally like you do a piece of bread or toast, lightly toasted, because you want the, you just want it, you know, the butter to be melty enough that the chocolate sprinkles will stick to it. Thank you for asking. <laughs> All right. Okay, yes, we're on to the art making. Okay, yeah, great. Um, so, you know, as I was saying, you know, I was thinking about this, uh, our meeting here today, and I, uh, I'm here from, uh, in, in my own studio today. Uh, I'm, I'm an artist, uh, a painter, and um, I also, I, I teach, I work with a lot of students, uh, mostly at OCAD and Sheridan College, um, but I also do these uh, classes with uh, adults, um, and, uh, you know, I really, enjoy these times uh you know i love the fact that uh i don't have to give you grades or anything and uh, people are usually you know very very engaged and excited uh, so it's a, always a pleasure to work with uh, uh grown-ups let's say um so i was thinking about food and um i it occurred to me that uh you know why what do I like about food, uh, you know, for me and maybe for you too, uh, you know, food is more than uh, just sustenance or fuel. It, it can be an experience. And uh, I think when, when food is exciting and stimulating as an experience, um, it is so because it presents us with a variety of um, sensations, uh, some of which may be surprising. Uh, so that variety is expressed, uh, you know, visually, of course, uh, you know, food is a lot of the appeal of food is visual, you know, when, when you see a dish that has, uh, you know, beautiful colors, there's, all, there's already a sense of uh, a pleasure of beauty there. Uh, there's also, visually speaking, a, a pattern, perhaps, of shapes of different sizes, different textures are already apparent at a visual level. Uh, but of course, the experience of food unfolds um, in your mouth, in your nose. Okay, and then there you might you might find um, you know that that experience of uh, interesting smells that that kind of come together in a in a pleasurable way, uh, and also you know things that happen in your mouth as far as textures. Uh, you know, there's some soft things, some crunchy things, uh, different tastes in there. Uh, so. I thought you know it'd be interesting to think about how you know we might begin to translate some of those sensations into visual marks. You know, for example, you know you could so for this activity, you know you could look at something. You know, if if you have your your meal in front of you, or there's a picture of food you want to draw, or you know you can also you know it's good to use your imagination or your memory. You can think of a, a favorite meal that you still remember and, and try to. Focus now on some of those textural experiences. Uh, so you know diff different, different, uh, you know, crunchiness or softness, or uh, different tastes. You know, like a strange combination of like a flowery um, taste uh, with a with a tartness. You know, so something like that, or uh, you know, those are those certain smells. Maybe a smell that surprises you. So how? Think about you know, how how might I start to translate those things into visual marks like uh, and and for this you know I'm using a pen but you can use a pen or a pencil or also have some watercolor uh, crayons here you can use any of these things and the way we might do it is to start exploring what that medium can do in terms of marks uh, you know it could be that you you know, you do some hatching like this, some some squiggles, and may, maybe that's that represents one kind of taste or texture. And then, if I were to make some other texture that's that's very different from this one, you know, how how might I make it? I don't know, feel more sharp or more more I don't know citrusy, if you like. However, however you can describe it to yourself, you know, is okay. Okay, or maybe maybe something dotted like this. 
you know, what, what kind of different marks can you make with your, your drawing instruments that then we can sort of connect to, to different tastes. If, if we were to draw a dish that has associated with it this different uh, taste and smell experiences, how might we begin to do that by varying the type of textures we can make? Okay, so go ahead and start playing with whatever drawing tools you have that you want to use today. Let's do that for a few minutes. I had uh, the other day I was in Montreal and um, I had a fantastic uh, lunch. Um, it was something called mafe, which is a West African dish. And uh, this is the one that I wanted to draw, but I couldn't, I didn't have time, I couldn't resist. I just had to just gulp it. But I did take a picture of it before and it's, um, it's um, like, um, fried crispy chicken in um in very delicious peanut sauce uh with some uh, chopped scallion and uh red onion and a little bit of lettuce uh just a super delicious dish okay that i might i might try to to draw a picture of, of here i started doing it with my uh, watercolor crayons or pencils and i will get to that in a minute Okay, so focus now on just creating a variety of marks. Uh, you know, if you're using a pencil, for example, you can you can think about you know, how can I hold the pencil in different ways to make it do different things. Uh, if I hold it on its side, so you get some of the the side of the lead, you get a kind of smudgy look. Or if I uh, you know stab the paper with it, you get sort of more more pointy, jagged kind of lines. Um, you could uh, almost use the pencil as a almost like a drumstick, you know, like this, and you get a kind of almost like sprinkles of uh, pepper or salt, if you will. Uh, and then, you know, if I'm drawing, as I usually draw with my pencil, you know, what what kind of lines can I make that could carry a different expression to them? You know, maybe think of uh, you know long cursive lines or uh, lines that are angular or lines that, that feel, uh, you know, you can also ascribe them a feeling, like if I were to make a line that seems calm and uh, you know, cool, what does that look like? And then what's the opposite of that kind of line? If I were, what's the opposite of cool? You know, if I, if I wanna make a line that feels uh, uh, kind of anxious or neurotic, or stressed out, you know, maybe, maybe it's maybe something like this really stressed out line, or maybe there's lines that are interrupted, they're, they're dashed or uh, dotted. Okay, just variety. So that, there's different kinds of lines might represent the different kinds of textures. Okay, so for me, I'm just looking at this picture of this dish I described for you, and there's the crispiness of the chicken skin. And it's got some burnt bits. And there's a, they sprinkled some kind of um, like chili, chili flakes. Uh, then there's the sauce. It's a kind of an orange sauce that looks very creamy. If I were to draw those two textures, how would I differentiate them? And then there's a little bit of vegetables, a little bit of green, a little bit of scallion, a little bit of... Uh, or, you know, chopped up lettuce. How will I convey the freshness of those vegetables? You know, that, that crispness, that sharpness of the scallion compared to the, like the warm, all enveloping smoothness of the peanut sauce with that little, uh, little bite of chili. You know, how, how might I convey that visually?
Bogdan. Mm -hmm. I'm just um, looking again at the I am here catalog. And I have to say, like, there is a there is a, a wonderful quote in here by uh, Rick Prellinger. And there was a word in there, which is quotidian. And yeah. I'm like, what is that word? Right. But it really is like, you know, the every the mundane, day, the every day. Yeah. But meanwhile, you know, like what we're doing today is what occurs every day is we need to, we eat, right? Uh, we hope we can eat. I mean, I mean, that is such a, a wonderful privilege really to have, you know, your dinner or your, you know, food every day. Um, but it's also the act of art making, which can be and should be an everyday activity. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be mundane. So what, what we're making today is exciting for sure because it's being recorded and uh, I have to say everybody who's participating today, you know, your work is at the AGO. Yeah, thank you, Doris, that, yeah. that, that is- uh... They share it, <laughs> right? On AGO makes, we have to do the- Oh it? yeah, there's a hashtag. Hashtag, hashtag yeah, a AGO, AGO makes. makes. So yeah, once we, once we work on our pieces, we should definitely show it in the camera and uh, please do share it at hashtag AGO makes. Yeah, and uh, you know, art, making a drawing of something is also a way to start paying attention to things that perhaps you haven't considered or have taken for granted. Um, like, you know, we all experience food when we eat it, uh, but you put it in your mouth and it stays good and it's gone. But, yeah. You know, when, <laughs> when, right. when, we, when we start to think about uh you know like this this you know the, the texture how might how how might i convey it to somebody else how might i describe a dish that i really like to somebody else and then how might i draw do a drawing of that dish that can begin to capture my experience and that that will force us to uh, reconsider and, and look more closely at you know what what makes food appealing and and in doing so um kind of revisit our experience and, and become more um more present really as you know something you no know, i don't know about you but uh when i when i eat often i just like i sort of like black out <laughs> I, i'm so hungry and i just sit down and i eat it and uh, like nobody can talk to me and then it's gone, right? So, but I think you know it's really important to, to just be aware of your presence in the moment. And, yeah, and, and yeah. food is such an important thing of our everyday existence. That the I think the, the mindfulness experience, right, Bogdan? Exactly. The, mind, the mindfulness, yeah. Because I actually did a mindfulness class and you were literally supposed to put like a piece of chocolate in your mouth. Yeah. And only try your best to only think about that piece of chocolate. Yeah. And when I was in art school, I was also, you know, while I was drawing was I was if I was drawing like a model, for example, I was, you know, told you have to think about be my so mindful, like you have to be in the moment to only be like, say, noticing, you know, the hair or the, the flesh or the curve or the muscle, you know, yeah. there was um so that mindfulness is uh, so important in our in our life and we sometimes forget like you said like you get so hungry or you're, yeah. you so want to have a beautiful drawing that you think more about the beautiful drawing than you do about what you're drawing or what you're thinking about yeah it's also i mean it's also the time or the culture we live in which is there's so many distractions that often you know you you eat while you're doing something else you eat while you're reading your email or you're talking to somebody. So often we don't pay attention to the, the food experience but because we're doing something else at the same time. Um, so I just wanted to show you here that uh, I've also played a little bit with uh, my watercolor crayons here. Oh, are they called crayons or pencils? I don't know what they're called, watercolor pencils. Uh, so what I did, you know, a little, little bit of different textures and I try to combine a few colors and I uh, you know this is really fun because I got a, I have a wet brush here and you can just um you know kind of wet different areas and, and let those um 
So the hatch marks start to kind of liquefy. Uh, and it's a kind of fun effect. It, it introduces a little bit of uh, unpredictability into your drawing, uh, which is nice. You know, I, I always like to be surprised by my, my drawings or paintings. I don't want to know exactly how it will look like at the end. I want to try to discover something. Okay. So how how are people doing with this? Any any thoughts or uh, any discoveries? What are you doing? Dare to share? <laughs> Who's going to hold up their piece? If you hold up your piece too, probably we should uh, make sure you say your name. Um, yeah. If you want to, you know, unmute yourself uh, to just to show us that you're going to share your screen. That way, uh, Fraser can know to highlight your um, <clears throat> highlight you in the uh, window. Yeah. Well, we, we can do let's do a little bit more drawing. I want to show you so so how to kind of take these the, the different different uh, textures and marks and make it make a drawing of something. So. I, for this one, you know, I really like to use, use a pencil, uh, but really the best thing is um, a pen or a marker like this. Uh, we're gonna do just a continuous line drawing. And the reason why a pen is preferable is because you can't erase it. Um, so, you know, when, when you have the chance to erase, then that will, that will make it likely that you will, you're, gonna, you're gonna sort of dial yourself. And you race and keep erasing and just wasting time. So, uh, continuous line drawing is about. So, if we have the different elements, right? We have this di different little textures that represent different components of the dish you're drawing, for example. Then the continuous line is what connects everything together. Okay, so you can. You know, I'm looking at a picture here of a. Um, it's like a casserole dish with. Uh, uh, some some black beans with scallions, uh, some corn, some uh, uh, tomato slices with uh, cilantro or parsley, some uh, maybe pulled chicken or something, and a slice of lime. Um, and you know what what I would do is may, maybe start with a kind of outline and try try to capture. You know you can move slowly with this. Try to capture a little bit of the different textures there using the. Some of those textures that you discovered. Try to kind of um, identify, you know, for me here, there's different areas that have different textures. There is sort of compartmentalized a little bit. So there is the kind of pool chicken is kind of stringy. And then here I have um, you know, the, the slice of uh, lime you know, with that familiar pattern. So again, try to do a continuous line. Don't worry about being super precise. It's not so much about uh, you know getting a perfect drawing of a lime or a perfect drawing of uh, tomato slices. This is more about the multitude, the totality of these textures and how they sit together. There's another um, tomato slice, and the tomato slice has the little little seeds in there in the middle. So that's another chance for me to kind of do a little squiggle. Not, not tomato slice here, more squiggles. I might use a, you know, kind of dotted line. Try, try to introduce that variety of, of lines and textures that you've, you've tried to explore earlier. And here's the, um, the corn is kind of, you know, googly, googly shapes. Okay, and then the the beans are you know pretty dark. You, know, you can you can also make it dark if you like with some hatching. Another way to differentiate uh, different materials or different uh, types of food is through their their value, how light or dark they are. So you can certainly do that as well. Yeah, something like this is how I would approach it. 
again, the continuous line emphasizes the idea that this is all together. It all comes together. The different textures are connected because they're presented as one, one dish within which there are different types of textures. And then, you know, to something like this, you can certainly add color. You know, you can you can do it with your uh, watercolor pencils as well. Layer on with color, get some of that a uh, little bit of wet to 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 mix the colors a little bit, and uh, just have fun with it. Above all, does anyone have any questions about any of this? About drawing in general, or about using a certain medium? Any questions at all? Ripe bananas. Oh, let me see ripe bananas. Yeah, I, I can. Can we make that big, uh, Fraser? I'd love to see it a little bit better. If you can highlight it. That's really great. I, I can't super see it, but I, I, I definitely get the texture. A banana. Yo, those bananas look perfect. You know, I, I like bananas that are almost ro rotten. You know, when they get those those brown spots, it's perfect for me. I love them. Good job in conveying that. Okay, anyone else want to show us their their creation? I I can show you mine. Yeah. Okay. Let's My see, sushi. Margaret. Oh, yeah. Sushi is a great subject for this, right? Because it's a little package that, you know, visually and texturally has a lot of excitement, a lot of differences there. Yeah. That looks great. Love it, Margaret. Thank you. Anyone else? And again, you know, any questions? Let me see. Could you please show us your attachment of setting your overhead camera? Oh. Sure. Uh, you mean this this thing? Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm just using my phone as an overhead camera, and I have a um, portable tripod. Like it kind of collapses. So, and I have a. I had to get this arm, this kind of perpendicular arm that attaches to the main body of the tripod. And then, uh, yeah, my phone is here, attached to it. That's it. Okay, well, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll get some, some color into this myself. Uh, it's certainly, you know, always uh, fun to, uh, you know, if food is an interesting subject for you to draw or paint, it's, uh, Always useful to look at other artists um, and how they they dealt with food. Oh, where did I buy the arm? Um, probably Amazon. It's been a while, but uh, you know, Uncle uh, Uncle Bezos. Okay, be pretty loose with the collar. Yeah, it's interesting. Food is a challenging subject in my opinion. Uh, and in some way, Mar Mary Pratt, you know th those pictures of food are are almost like pictures of food that are not food anymore in in the sense that there there's something like beyond the the quotidian that picture of the fish fillets is uh almost like it's 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 uh depicted as uh almost like a religious picture 
and um, you know, there's other artists who, you know, may may show food in a more. Um, I, I don't know how you you could make food look more, uh, you know, earthly, of yeah. the body. Or we can just say it, Bogdan. You know, she was she was talking about her food as being like sexy and exotic, you know, uh, exhilarating. Like she, there's an erotica to the way she <laughs> drew. Right. Yeah. Painted, I should say. For sure, for sure. And, you know, that, that's why I really like these two pictures because they, they, there's this real contrast. So yeah, the, the Mary Pratt uh, approach to making a picture of, of uh, food is, is to elevate it beyond the, to, to bring it to the realm of the ecstatic. Yes, yeah, sensuality and spirituality almost. So like, like the food, which is you know, our, our daily bread kind of thing. Like f- food beyond the everyday. Whereas, you know, the, the Annie Potugo, you know, he captured a moment of that, like, uh, you know, what I described myself, that, that urge, like when, when there's food there, you got to just destroy it because you're so hungry. It's a, it's a, it's a lot more visceral. It's a, it, it belongs to the body. It belongs to the immediate. It's not of the higher realm. So, you know, I, I really like that juxtaposition between the two pictures in terms of their 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 meaning or the relationship that they suggest uh, to food. And and of course, the Annie Patugu, you know, may and probably comments on a shortage of food. You know, when when you don't have a lot of food, then you you know you eat you're hungry and you eat it when it's there. Yeah, and there's also, you know, food that is, you know, your um, sort of something you grew up with or culturally related. And then there's food that for the first time, you know, you might enjoy it, um, you know, in another country or in another city or town or somebody else's home. And then in weirdly, I mean, it can also make you nostalgic for your your own food or the desire to want to share your, you know, your like in the case of Annie Patukuk, I know that like her country food, like seal, um, for example, would be, you know, just such a treat. She drew so many uh, pictures of, of, you know, people in the kitchen and, and um, you know, basically preparing the seal to eat. And uh, at the same time, she did pictures of like, you know, at the, the, the grocery store, the co-ops and the um, the places where you could buy, but they were always like these frozen meals, which would be also kind of entertaining. But somehow yeah. to me, those are like movie night foods. And, you know, your your the food that um, you ask for for your birthday, for example, is probably the telling meal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I mean, food is so woven into our personal narratives and identities. You know, the, the food that just was your favorite food when you were a kid or the food that was your favorite food in, you know, your country, if you come from a different country and you, you're always nostalgic for that. It always, you never forget it. You know, I, I know that, you know, because I'm, I come from Romania and I still have, uh, you know, there's nothing like Romanian food in Romania for me. You know, not necessarily that is better, but it has a very specific meaning for me. It's irreplaceable because it's the food, the taste, and the smells are, you know, part of my cultural DNA. They're they're just part of my identity, and you know, I'm sure that's the same for everybody. I actually have some food guilt. You know, when um, when you eat something that you're just like, oh, I don't want anybody to know I ate this, which is could be anything from like a fish fillet at the McDonald's or (laughs) it can even no, really, that's like food shame. Right. Like for me, it's food shame. But the other food shame is that my Dutch background, I don't really I love nasi goreng. Right. Like Dutch foods. But a lot of those are colonial, like because of colonization. Right. Um, So there's food guilt there. And yet I, you know. I, I can't help but enjoy it. So 
Yeah, totally. It's a lot of a lot heavy. of culture. Yeah. A lot of cultural and history that's woven into food and, and trauma as well. Okay, well, does anyone else want to share, you know, any thoughts or any of your creations? You know, we'd love to see it. Uh, we're, we're pretty much at the end of our, our time here. So um, let us know what, uh, what you think and show us what you've done. And uh, yeah, I don't know if we posted that uh, hashtag. Oh yeah, at hashtag AGO makes. Uh, just put up your uh, masterpieces of food. Oh, okay, Doris, let me see. It's not a masterpiece by any means, but I did have to do my hockelslach on a piece of bread. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know what this is. Tell me what hockelslach is. Hockelslach, it's like chocolate sprinkles. Oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah, Literally, yeah. Literally, like, like, it's just so hilarious, really. Um, and yeah, then I did the, the box, the one, you know, the continuous line drawing. Oh, okay, that was, yeah. That, that was, was my cool. attempt at the box, so... <laughs> brilliant yeah thank you thank you so much bogdan oh yeah no thank you it was my pleasure thank you everybody for being here with us you know, i love talking about art what a great way to spend an hour and uh of course come to the museum there's nothing like seeing art in person Oh, I can see oh, Kelly. Okay. Kelly McLean yeah. is sharing her her drawings. I see that. Yep. Fabulous. Great, great different textures there. Yeah, Ellen. Oh, look oh at that. beautiful, beautiful. Wonderful. Oh, right. colorful, Liz. Looking great. You got all the ingredients. Oh, here we got a comment, which is interesting. Did you already visit the Spanish exhibit? Um, yes, yeah, I did. Bogdan, have you? I haven't had the chance yet, no. Yeah, I just did it on Wednesday, like literally, like I only spent 45 minutes in there, uh, but it is, it's it's very exciting um, and, and, but deep. It's a deep, deep, deep exhibition in terms of colonizing uh, the world and yeah. All right. Um, Oh, thank you. That's great. Yeah. So faith and fortune has been shared in the chat. So people can check that out. It is one of the new exhibits. Oh, thank you. Okay, we get a thank you. All right. That means that it's 303. Uh, and and we should be saying goodbye to each other, even though it's hard. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>